Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Mallory Sykes. I'm the director of Renew Media. Thank you for attending our second webinar today about reputation management and uh, social media management. For those of you who don't know, Renew Media is a full service marketing agency that was founded with BC Wood Properties tenants in mind. We hope to be your main marketing resource as you continue to grow your business. At this time, I'm going to go ahead and introduce, introduce our presenter and digital specialist, Christina Harrison. Christina, you can take it from here. Hi, everyone. Can everyone hear me okay? All right. Well, it is a pleasure to get to speak with you today regarding reputation and social management. A little bit about me. Um, I've been in the digital world now for five plus years. Um, I've worked with retail, restaurants, automotive, doctor's offices, banks, and just about any other company you can imagine. Um, I absolutely love what I do, so it is a pleasure to get to talk to you guys today. Um, I know we have all had experiences in these sections of our business, so this should be a great topic to cover. Um, but if you could, when you do have questions, go ahead and type those out in your questions box. And when we get to the end of the presentation, I will read and answer all of those at the end, um, just so we can stay on topic. But I will go ahead and kick us off. So let's take a look at our agenda today. All right, so some training objectives. Today we are going to analyze how reputation management and social media solutions fit into the consumer journey. We're going to uncover the value that reputation and social media management provide to companies and why it is an invaluable part of the virtual presence for a business. We're going to gain a high level understanding of the specifics to reputation management and social media solutions. And then we're going to wrap it up with some frequently asked questions that I get from a lot of my small business owners. So let's go ahead and dive right on in. So today, the word of mouth happens online, and consumers can learn all they need to about a business in a matter of minutes. People have also shifted the way they research and buy, making a strong virtual presence more critical than ever. So what is a virtual presence? That is your company's online footprint. That's your website, when you're mentioned, the communication you have with your customers online, and your social media presence. A strong visual virtual presence is beneficial when they are searching for you, when they visit your website, and when they are reading reviews. The people in this part of the consumer journey are also more likely to convert now and in the future. When we think of social media, we are thinking of the virtual presence, that foundational element that must be present and in place before you start looking at digital media tactics. It allows you to interact with consumers and really appeal to users when they are in that interest, action, or advocacy stage. Social media really fits also into like any of these categories. For example, when people are in the advocacy stage of the consumer journey, they have already shopped, purchased, or visited your store. They are now telling their friends, family, coworkers about their experience. This is a great way to interact and respond to your customers while your location is fresh on their mind. You want to influence them when they are in these moments. So what's the impact of all this specifically? Like, why is it important, right? What is reputation management? So consistent listings and reviews help your brand get discovered and make a positive impression on consumers when they are looking for you. Consistent listings and monitor reviews also impact your organic SERP rankings. What is SERP? That is your search engine results page. So for instance, when you go to Google and you search for something and you have all these stores that organically are just in, a, in line on that first page, that's your organic SERP, your SERP. So who has ever called or visited a business only to find that their phone number is like inactive or they have moved? Maybe they've even closed. It can be so frustrating and ultimately starts that consumer journey off on a bad foot, which you don't want. Which leads me to 84% of people trust reviews as much as they trust personal recommendations. So it's important that they represent your company well. 88% of a Moz survey respondents read and looked at used reviews to determine the quality of a local business. This is a great thing and can also be really frustrating. I understand that someone's going to totally judge you off of someone else's opinion, but that's the kind of business that we're in. So you need to solidify your virtual presence by ensuring that when people search for you or your services, they find accurate listing information and positive reviews. 
Also, review generation is going to help you reach back out to these advocates that have already shopped or come to your locations. So nearly $10.3 billion, I said billion dollars worth of potential annual sales are lost because of the wrong, missing, or incomplete local business information. So with all of this data, what I have to tell you is that we need to read a real review. I mean, a real review that I found online that has not been responded to. I'm then going to read two different response approaches that you could take to this. Afterward, a poll is going to pop up on your screen, and I want you all to choose what you think is right. And we will go from there on why those responses are best or not suited uh, for this type of review. So let's look at this review now. I have been to this salon a few times, but will not go back. Went in for a regular pedicure and gel manicure. My nails look pretty good, but my toes look bad. The cost should have been $65, according to their website. I was charged 67. I'm not sure where that number came from. I gave him $80, four 20s, and asked for change. He took my money, said thank you, and headed to the back. I was so shocked that I sat there a minute, but he never returned. He did not deserve that much of a tip, and he knew it. There are better salons in Lexington for the money. Holy cow, what a hot review. So let's look at how we could have responded to this. Again, I'm gonna read these two responses, and then a poll is going to pop up on your screen for you all to select the answer you think is best appropriate. Response number one, we are so sorry for your poor experience in our shop. I'm sure he had a good reason for the mischarge. As for the tip issue, he probably just assumed that was an 18% tip. If you would reach out to us at our phone number, I'm sure we could work something out. Thank you and sorry again. Not bad. We'll see response number two. I'm very sorry for your experience. We definitely should have explained the pricing more clearly when you were in the salon and listen more closely when you asked for change. Our website pricing is accurate and should have been followed. Can you reach out to me at this number? I would love to talk to you personally and to make it up to you. Thank you. So at this time, you guys should see a poll on your screen. Select which answer you think is best. Everybody getting your answers in? Oh, it looks like so far everyone is loving response number two, but we did have someone respond that response number one was good too. So definitely how you can respond to reviews um, is kind of like up in the air, right? Like what's the best ways, what's not the best ways. Here's why response number one might not have been the best choice. So you response to people are correct. That is the best response. Response number one, so you have to be careful in how you respond to these, right? Because your outward response is also how we're reflecting to the rest of your audience. So saying that they had a good reason for this mischarge, as for the tip that he issued, probably just assumed it was an 18%. You never want to assume anything when responding to a review, right? We always want your client to be right. So response number two, this is the best selection. You go over the error, errors and you affirm everything that the customer is saying. You want to create that, you know, I'm on your side type vibe when you respond to bad reviews, right? So in addition to this though, let's take a look at some more things to avoid when drafting these responses. So things to avoid, don't be combative. I know that can be so hard, especially for me sometimes, because I'm like, well, hey, I have an awesome, I do an awesome job. Not always the case, right? So don't be combative. Anything involving money, take it offline. So do the best you can when someone starts talking numbers or mischarging or pricing. Um, you want to take that offline. And what I mean by taking it offline is you saw in my previous responses that I gave phone numbers. Make sure that you, you know, give those closed ended sentences to not make them pry into a further conversation online, but offer your phone number and your email address and ask them to reach out to you to take it offline. You don't want anything to start trending in bad conversation, which brings me to avoid comment wars. I see this a lot where you'll respond and they'll respond and someone else will respond. And then the next thing you know, we are viral for all the wrong reasons, and we definitely don't want that. 
So avoid comment wars at all possible. That's why you wanna offer your contact information as soon as you can, resolve the issue within 24 hours and move on. Always assume the customer is completely right. Even though most cases as small business owners and big business owners know that the customer might have some wrong information, but they've heard it or seen it somewhere. So we always have to assume that the customer is completely right. We want to appeal to their good side. Keep personal feelings out of your response. Kind of leads into my next bullet point, and I think it's a little self-explanatory, but just know that it's not coming at you personally. Even though you love your business like it's your child, no one's really yelling at your child. So try and keep those personal feelings out of your response. Remember, it's not a personal attack. It is simply business. And when someone is mentioned by name in a review, let's not discuss reprimanding. Just a short story. I had someone last month that name dropped an employee. And you know, that can be such a dangerous territory because what you don't wanna do is hurt the credibility of people that work for you because you hired them for a reason, right? So you have to be careful in how you address those situations. So try not to discuss reprimanding employees or name dropping too much as well. You wanna keep it open, airy, apologetic, and most definitely take it offline if it starts to escalate. So let's go over some best practices. All right, update listings, consistency is key, guys. There are so many websites, so many platforms. You've got Yelp, Yahoo, Google+, Bing, Facebook, social media, everything. Update your listings and be consistent. If you have hours on one page, have them somewhere else. If you have product on one page, have it somewhere else. Be consistent in everything that you do across all platforms. Check your maps. Did you know, and I actually didn't know this until a few months ago, but you can add across froms on a Google map. So when people look you up on a Google map and say you're, I don't know, we have liquor barns up here um, that tells you, tells you anything. We have a, a liquor barn up here and I, I have a small business that will say, okay, we are across from the liquor barn. You know, if you have one of those major iconic stores that you associate with or that you use all the time when you're trying to describe to a customer where you're located, you can actually add a location distinction, which is an across from or next to or anything like that. So if that helps you add that in. Accurate phone numbers are super important. You know, you definitely don't want people calling the wrong number and just getting frustrated and again, starting that consumer journey off on the wrong foot. So does your website have correct info? If your product listing has changed or your services are different, did you update that? Does it reflect that? Because what you don't wanna do is have someone come in looking for something and you not have it or you no longer serve it. So does your website have that correct info? And if it doesn't, let's fix that first thing, right? claim your business. So across all platforms, you know, and of course, you know, we, we know that there are multiple platforms. You've got over 70 plus, you know, uh, sites that people are on these days. Like I, like I said, the Google Plus, the Yahoo's, the Bing's, the Yelp's. I mean, all, all of those sites, you know, have you claimed your business on those though? Because if people are in that forum and they're leaving comments and you haven't claimed it or you don't have a profile, then all of this stuff is just going unanswered. Quantity of reviews. I'm a huge advocate of quantity of reviews. You know, a lot of people, especially if they're new businesses, don't have a whole lot. So learning how to ask for them and really have a good review generation system is definitely needed for a business. Duplicate sites. This is actually a big issue. If people had an old website, say they've moved, they ended up getting a new website, be sure you're deleting that old domain because what you don't want is people going to the wrong website, it having broken links, it not working, and that'll actually hurt your quality score on Google. So we really wanna make sure that you've got one good site that is consistent, that has the right phone numbers, has the correct info, um, and that has a good place for people to go and leave reviews accurate menu and product offerings and services. Again, same thing we're saying, just make sure what you do put out to the consumers um, and to anyone out looking to shop is correct and accurate. 
and response times. Guys, we really wanna make sure that we respond to people within 24 hours. We live in a now world and we just can't afford to extend responses longer than that because if we're not responding, they feel like they're not important or you know that it wasn't a big issue. And so really response times are super, super great. And all of these are important because according to Google Insights, which I encourage all of you to go to, um, it's free, they have tons of great information, but go to Google Insights because there are important factors to consider because compared to two years ago, 50% of shoppers who are on mobile are looking to make a purchase immediately. We live in that now world I was talking about, and if listings and reputation aren't up to par, you miss a lot of opportunities for your company. Remember, I said $10.3 billion go unclaimed, right? So having gone over the best and, work, best and worst practices and all of the listing consistencies, you're probably wondering like, how do you even find out if your information is correct or incorrect? Or what site should you be on for good customer interaction? How do you know? So the cool thing is, is we can pull a free audit for you. This audit is gonna show you where you have missing information, where you have the wrong information, if you have claimed a listing or have an account on that platform. And we will also tell you your percentage of potential customers. We will tell you how many customers that you could possibly get. So cool. And again, totally free. So get excited. It's amazing. So say we do this audit for you, though. Then what? What are some things that we can do to help your business, right? Because I am totally overwhelming you right now with how to respond to reviews and that you have to do it in less than 24 hours. And we know that you all are already so busy. So just take a listen. There are numerous ways that we can help your business compete by leveraging a great online reputation, right? So we have new review notifications. Anytime you get a review on any of these platforms, you'll be notified. You'll get custom responses, both to positive and negative reviews, which takes that time off of you as well, having to spend to make sure that if you're getting all these notifications that someone's actively responding to those for you. You will get weekly or monthly review generation so if you were to supply us new customer emails like once a month or bi-monthly or however you want to do that we will reach back out to those people for you and say hey how'd they do leave us a review you will even get a review widget for your website we want to generate reviews we want to make sure you have good quality and quantity of reviews so getting a review widget for your website you will also get a dashboard to track these reviews mentions and your share of voice we attack listings from both angles we want to work to immediately identify and correct incomplete listings while feeding to the correct info group which is our four ma major data aggregators customer reviews are so important to generate and to respond to so what are the four major data aggregators you have factual Axicom, InfoGroup, and Newstar. And to better explain our partnership with these data aggregators, they allow us to comb through the vast internet and find, but more importantly, fix all of the issues that could be out there. So NAP distribution is a long-term strategy. And again, it affects those four major data aggregators that you see at the top of your screen. It's an immediate strategy to establish your brand on over 70 plus sites, guys, really trying to cut down on that time for you. So, and probably the most important factor is how do you know if all this is working, right? You have to trust us. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> you have a great reporting system here that shows you not only how you're doing, but where you started, where you are currently at, and most importantly, your industry standard. Because most times companies that you know are doing reviews or that have social platforms they're like man what's my competition doing like where do i fall in line with them you know i'm just trying to stay afloat here you know we get that you'll get a starting score again your industry average and you'll be able to track where you are you'll see that in the green at the bottom that number 18 that's 18 listings we found with accurate information 21 with maybe possible errors and nine missing them completely we would work to fix the ones that 
the 21 that have errors, we'll work to fix those. And then we'll go ahead and add you to the nine that are missing your listing. So really just making sure that you're everywhere you need to be, especially where your industry needs it. So some questions I get asked around this, and I just want to address them because I'm sure you're probably going to have some for me, is what if I don't respond to a, like a review notification? Like, what does that mean, right? Well, so we'll post for you. So essentially, if you were to get a review, we would respond it to it and we would email you and you would have 24 hours to answer that listing. And if you don't respond in 24 hours to us, then we'll go ahead and post it. So just really keeping that 24 hour in mind. So, and then do you require my logins for the already existing platforms that I have? Another frequently asked question. Um, I do, but it's also not the end of the world if we have to create new ones. So just two questions I get kind of revolving this, but of course, responding to reviews is now mostly taking place on, you guessed it, social platforms, which leads us to the social media management part. You guys know that the social media world is viral. Responding to reviews and using the tips we mentioned before are more important than ever. We definitely don't want you going viral for the wrong reasons. So you're not sure if social media has an impact. I want you to check out these stats. Again, I love stats because they're not wrong and it just goes to show you how impactful it is. 89% of social media messages to brands go ignored. That is so crazy. They go ignored. 71% of consumers who have had a good social media service experience with a brand are likely to recommend it to others. Imagine if 71% of your current customers recommended you to more people. That would be huge. So if we have 71% of people willing to recommend it on a social platform, you can't afford to not be there. And more importantly, if you are there, maintaining an active presence. 80% of social media time is spent on a mobile device. Again, just an important stat to show you, our consumers are on the go and they're everywhere. So having this information in a now world and accurate listings is more important than ever. Facebook accounts for one in every six minutes spent online and one in every five minutes spent on mobile. That is a lot of time, especially if you consider how many users are on Facebook every day and every hour, every minute, obviously. That is a ton of people and a huge audience that you could be impacting. Y'all, I'm going to be real honest with you. I want to shout this stat at you, but I will refrain. 90 percent of consumers read online reviews before visiting a business 90 percent let's think about that for a second i know when i'm shopping online i always like i mean always look for the negative review right because you want to see how it was handled what the problem was you know yada yada even worse than that if i'm shopping online and there are no reviews I don't buy from it because that to me means, okay, well, maybe it's sketchy. No one has been there or bought anything. Do I want to be their first customer? You know, it's just, it's, it's a risk. So review generation and responses are so key. 90% guys, 90%. This is where we can have an impact and this is where we can make a huge difference. So now that I've made it seem like a super big deal, <laughs> how often should I post, right? Like you want active content on here. So I found this really cool graphic from Hootsuite. Um, most studies agree that once per day is optimal with a maximum of two posts per day. HubSpot found that pages under 10,000 fans experienced a 50% drop in engagement per post if they have posted more than once per day. But at a minimum, you should post to your Facebook pages at least three times per week. This is a great graphic for you guys to just keep in the backs of your head to know that, you know, kind of where you need to be interacting uh, level wise here. Um, and again, I, if I didn't say it, I will say it. You will get a copy of this deck because I definitely want you all to at least be doing some of these posts, um, post times. You see that that's suggested, and I will say one note, this is per day unless it is noted on this graphic because it was a little confusing when I looked at it. 
but Twitter, the suggested per day is 15. LinkedIn is one suggested per day. Facebook is one suggested per day. Instagram is one to two per day. Pinterest is 11 per day. And Google Plus is two. So crazy, guys. That is a lot of work. And most studies agree that once per day is optimal. So again, it's a lot of posting. You want to post meaningful content, specifically active interactions. So I don't want to go too in the weeds with this, but I don't know if a lot of you know that Facebook's algorithm actually has changed. So I'm going to explain this a little bit, like what are meaningful interactions? Meaningful interactions on Facebook are from friends and family over content from brands. It has become trickier than ever to ensure that your organic content gets the screen time it deserves. But Facebook is still the largest social media network in the world. Making its algorithm work for you is super important to a successful Facebook marketing strategy. So this new algorithm is going to prioritize what they are calling active interactions. That is commenting and sharing, just so you know. Active interactions are commenting and sharing. So the new algorithm will prioritize these active interactions over likes and click-throughs, which they are calling passive interactions. So no, sharing and commenting is active and likes and click-throughs are passive. The idea being that actions requiring more effort on the part of the user are higher quality and thus for they're more meaningful. Rather than passively scrolling through news feeds and occasionally pausing to like a photo or an article, Facebook wants users to be inspired to engage in conversations with each other. Which leads me to image. Image is everything. Facebook actually requires more imaging for ads. To be clear, we are talking about social management here. But I did just want to include this on here for you because as we talk about organic posting onto your own social media page, just know image and things that will get users to comment and share those active interactions are what's going to be really important. And I just wanted you to know if you ever do your own Facebook advertising that they do have an 80-20 rule. 80-20 um, meaning they need 80% image and only 20% text. So that's just a fun tidbit for you. Reviews. I will beat you over the head with reviews today, people. Respond and generate. I'm not going to be able to say it enough. But I do have a really fun fact regarding this. So did you know, according to Google, in the past two years, videos with the word review in the title had more than 50,000 years 50,000 years worth of watch time on mobile alone. And that study was just done in January of 2017. Oh my gosh, that is so much time online, on your phones, and is again, just really pushing it home as to why having a great online presence is important. And of course, make sure all your social media channels are linked onto your website and vice versa. As you go to different browsers as well, make sure that you're linked. So on your Internet Explorers and your Google Chromes, just make sure that you are linking all of those appropriately on your website and that they work across different browsers. So there are two pieces to social media management services. There are standard and there's premium and we'll go over premium in just a minute. But standard social media management is going to help a client who does not have time to create content or post to social channels. So what this standard solution is designed to do is to help you be consistent in your postings. We want you to resonate with your advocates and play a major role in offsite optimization content. Again, helping that organic Google listing. So let's dive in. Weekly posts to all channels on the client's behalf. Access to our content library which our content library is so great. Housed within our content library are things like industry-related news, blog-type content. They're here, here to help you create the message around your business industry, not really specific into a certain business. It is industry-related content, though, so still super meaningful. And again, we want those active interactions, so things that people are going to share and comment. So this content library is going to come super in handy. 
the ability to schedule future posts across channels. How great would it be to have a calendar and be able to say, okay, you know what? On Instagram, I want to do this on this day. Twitter, I want to do this on this day and be able to schedule out future posts across all your channels. You're going to be able to identify leads with our Twitter listening. Twitter listening is probably one of the coolest products. So if your company has a Twitter, um, you can identify a select group of keywords that you might be interested in. So for instance, if someone, like if you are a greenhouse and you have a lot of plants, you want people that are talking about plants and gardening and things of that nature. So we would put together a listening keyword list, if you will. So anyone that were to comment with those kind of keywords in there, you would get a notification saying, hey, um, my friend Tori commented on this Twitter post about plants. And you would be able, your company, to go in and respond and say, hey, saw your post about plants. How cool are your plants? Come look at our plants. I mean, I'm sure your message would be a lot better than that, but I'm just trying to paint a picture here. <laughs> okay, next you have an analytics dashboard. Analytics dashboard is great. It allows you to see that everything is working as it should, what we're posting, when we're posting, and how it's working. You'll get a social media calendar approval available. That was a mouthful, but the same thing, you're gonna get a calendar um, and we will set it all up with all of your posts and when things go live and when they're gonna be boosted. And you would obviously get to approve that and make sure that everything is the way you want. And the customer must respond to social comments. Yes, we want you responding to your social comments and we will help you do that as well. We want quality over quantity. So make sure the posts that are out there present themselves with some sort of engagement with the brand's audience. We need it to be engaging enough or urgent enough they share it with our friends and family. And this is how we're going to organically elevate the brand within the newsfeed. So it, we're gonna check in now on our premium solutions, right? We recommend our premium services for strategic accounts where we can increase consumer engagement. What does that mean? This is meant for businesses who have a strong audience already. This is geared to make the overall approach a marketing vehicle to those who already have a good presence. So let's look. An online marketing strategy is where we sit down with you and make sure we know what your goals are. Are you wanting new business? Are you wanting to adhere to the followers you already have? And so on and so forth. Just really making sure we understand the type of voice and presence that you wanna have. Custom content creation. Again, it's the same thing. Uh, we have an amazing creative team, so we can make you any content, contextual, visual, whatever you need. Active listening strategy. Remember, that applies to Twitter. I had a very poor explanation with plants. Remember that. <laughs> and outreach marketing posts. Um, the outreach marketing posts are um, where you can you're gonna set up, a, like again, the calendar with us and we will be able to um, push out marketing posts to specific targeted groups. And we would sit down with you in that online marketing strategy and identify who those groups are and the best way that we're gonna um, push posts to those. And paid social ads. We can do display, native, video. We have lots of targeting uh, with paid social ads. You can do ethnicity, age, gender, et cetera. Uh, we have many, many facets to get us to the target audience that you desperately need. So I'm gonna show you a few of examples. Um, and before I show you some examples, I wanna touch on too, you're seeing basic channels and premium channels. Don't want you to worry too much about that, but I just wanted to put it on here so you could see an example. You have level ones, level twos, and level threes located at the bottom of your screen. So like a level one would be one premium and two basic, level two is two and two, and level three is three premiums and two basics. Those are just examples. Um, depending on, again, your online marketing strategy, we could set this up however you want. So whichever platforms you want to touch will work with you. Um, just kind of wanted to explain what you were seeing on the basic and premium aspect there. So here's some examples done from desktop only. So here's a Facebook desktop post kind of that we, we put together. A full-on Twitter page, cover and all an Instagram post, and some video. And we actually got to film that video. So that was really, really cool. So just some examples for you. 
So we're going to move in now into our frequently asked questions. Now, again, after my frequently asked questions, if you have questions, keep on asking. I will address them here in just a minute. But let's go into some frequently asked questions that I get all the time. Do I need a social account on every platform? Platform meaning Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, Google+, all of those. So I won't lie to you. The more you have, the better. But I also want to make sure that before you say, you know, do I need a social account on every platform? And before I say yes on everything, also make it manageable for yourself and as your company. Um, you know, if you're doing this on your own or you have one person that's handling your social media and you're online, make sure that, you know, you can handle the type of workflow that's going to come from every platform you join. Because what you don't want to do is join you know, 12 platforms and get all these reviews on the all these platforms and not be able to keep up with it unless you, um, you know, kind of join into a solution that we kind of talked about today. So I just don't want you to overwhelm yourself and have reviews in places that you're not responding to. So that's a yes and no. I hope that was helpful. <laughs> so do I need multiple Facebook pages for multiple locations? Again, this is kind of a tricky question depending on your business plan. So I typically say if you have businesses that are really far apart from each other, you definitely should have multiple Facebook pages for multiple locations. But if you have a lot of small businesses within a relatively close area, then maybe you don't. Again, it goes down to your marketing strategy of, you know, do you have completely different customer bases depending on where they're located? Um, are there different income levels where those stores are located? So there's separate different ways to look at it. Um, but yes, I know some people that have multiple Facebook pages for multiple locations, and I know some people that don't. So it really varies, again, on your goals as a company and your target audience for each store. But definitely something that if you had questions on needed help figuring out, we could definitely help you figure that out. So how much time should I spend on social media promoting my company? Again, I would refer back to that graphic that I had a couple of slides ago. Those are pretty much the industry standard. So you saw Twitter was like 15 times a day. Facebook was at least, you know, one or two times a day. Um, Pinterest was like several times a day. So, I mean, those are, again, just industry recommended. Um, but you definitely want to stay relevant because, again, the more content that you put out and that you interact with your customers, you're organically boosting yourself on Google, which is always great. And you're organically reaching your customers that have liked your page and are following you on these social platforms. So you definitely should be in there at least once a day. Is social management the same as social advertising? No. Social management is where I want you to kind of paint a picture in your head. And I know I did such a great job with my uh, nursery and my plant shop, so bear with me. But social management is your own personal Facebook page. So anything you post or anything that you follow or when someone likes your page, that is what you can control on one site, your social management. Social advertising is different. That is when you actually target an audience. So someone that may not have liked your page already, someone that might not be following you, but they fit into the bucket categories that we have said are important. For instance, this person, you know, is 25, a female, and likes to get her nails done, um, you know, or whatever. We could target that however we need to. But yes, social advertising, think targeted and specific. Social management, think on your own site. And the social management would be your own Instagram, your own Pinterest, your own Facebook page. And social advertising is who you want to send it to. So I hope that helps. And if there is a duplicate page and I don't have access, can I delete it? This is probably like my humdinger question that I get all the time because I'm sure all you business owners probably know that, okay, I had an employee here once that created our Facebook page, has left, and now I don't have the login credentials and I don't have access and so I just made another one. Well, now we've created two different social domains and that's not good either because then customers don't know which one's real and which one's old. So just deleting out your profile picture or having, you know, one gone is not going to cut it. So I will be honest with you. It's not exactly a super quick process. We have to appeal it to Facebook or to Instagram or those those places and exchange a couple of uh, conversations. But once we prove you're the business owner, yes, we can definitely delete it. 
if I get a bad review, can I just delete it? So um, while that would be really great, <laughs> no, we do not advise that. So you all probably heard the saying of any publicity is good publicity. That's true in a sense. If you get a bad review, it almost gives you a platform to shine and explain, I am so sorry and take, you know, take the credit for whatever happened or fix a problem. Um, you know, it gives you a platform to make a difference and to make a change in that consumer's journey and their thought about you. So I've always said I like bad reviews more than I like good reviews, only in the sense that it gives you such a great opportunity as a business and as a business owner to prove yourself, change that customer, and then show all of your future customers that you care about every single person that interacts with your brand. So final questions. I see that I do have a few hands raised and a few questions. So I'm going to look at those. We will respond, I'll read them out loud. Um, and so give me just a moment and I'm going to look at some of these really quickly. Okay, Chris Walters just says, yep. <laughs> so I'm glad you're agreeing with me. Uh, thank you, yep away. <laughs> And then I have a, uh, let's see, I have one here that says, how do I remove a bad or false Google review? Well, I think we just covered that in my frequently asked questions, but we do not remove them. Uh, we just respond to them. Um, I will say though, there is a caveat. So if the review is absolutely a false claim or is completely incorrect or something like that, uh, that you actually have proof that no, this customer did come here, um, this customer is just outraged for no reason. In that case, we could actually appeal it to Google and submit that evidence, like it's a crime scene. We could submit that evidence and appeal to have that review taken down, but nine times out of 10, no, we cannot remove them and we will respond in the best way possible. Do you agree with hiding comments on social media? So, this is a, this is a double-edged sword. I'm actually going to say no. Only because I think social media is meant, like I had said before, um, those active interactions. We want people commenting and sharing because that's what Google, or what Google, goodness gracious, that's what Facebook sees as important. So no, I, I don't think, I mean, Facebook specific, I wouldn't hide my comments, which is I feel like where most people kind of go viral is on those trending, um, trending posts and Twitter. You definitely don't want to because all Twitter is is commenting. So I don't agree with hiding comments on social media. You don't want to take away the reason that social media was even made in the first place. It's for people to connect, to respond to each other, and to most importantly, talk about things that matter. You know, um, the, and this is a sidebar, but a political election has also changed. I'm sure you all have noticed, you know, that a lot of people reach out now and vo voice their opinions on social media. We wanna do the same thing with our brands to an extent. We want people to be able to interact with us, us to respond to them. So taking down comments is really just like cutting off a form of extension or a, an extension of communication with your customer base. So the only time I would maybe turn off comments is if something major drastic has happened and we have a serious cleanup on aisle five, <laughs> but then I would recommend like once we fix that problem, whatever that catastrophe may be, but you turn it back on. So I hope that answers all of our questions. I don't think I see any more. This is all the questions I have. Okay, so what's next, right? What's next, there it is. We're gonna set an appointment or send questions to Mallory. Um, here is her contact information, msykes at renewmedia.com. Feel free to call her with any questions. Um, even if you all just have general questions, not about product, just, you know, how can I make this better? How can I help? It's 859-335-9663. And you're gonna get a free digital audit. So I mentioned it before, um, I'll say it again. It's absolutely great. Just to at least know where you're at right now um, in your reputation and in your social media presence. Um, if your website's fast, if it's not fast, let us do this for you, let us help you out. So just call and set that appointment up with Mallory. There's her phone number, um, and I'm super excited because if anyone knows me, which you all don't, but now you do, 
I love the holidays. So next month's topic, look, I have Christmas trees, is preparing for the holiday rush. Thursday, October 25th at 3 p.m. I'm really excited about this one, guys. Um, I love talking about anything holiday. Um, but here's what we're covering. We'll be covering website promotions. So basically, how do you do those effectively? Um, when do you intro a new sales event when your company has one? Um, you know, how do you roll that out appropriately? What's the deal with event, geofence, and CRM targeting? I'm sure you all have advertisers talking to you all the time. So let me better explain what these products do and why they're good for you or not good for you and et cetera. Um, email blasts are huge this time of year. So let's talk about how to make those non-spam compliant and make sure that they're falling into inboxes and not spam folders. Creatives, the good use of white space, you know, how you do effective creative, how you make it appealing, um, and affinity audiences. This is people buying for others. That holiday season's a little weird where it's not your direct customer base, it's someone buying for your direct customer base. So how to reach that affinity audience, that secondary buying group that's buying for someone else. So with that, that is it for me. It has been a pleasure talking to you all today to myself. <laughs> answering your questions. Um, I'm going to turn it back over to Mallory with anything final or further. Um, again, it's been a pleasure. Thank you all for your participation today. All right. Thank you, Christina. That was great. And thank you for everyone uh, who's who attended today. I hope to see you at the next webinar next month. Um, and I hope you enjoyed learning about social media management and reputation management. Thank you so much.